Watch this if you finally want to get lean. You want to be able to go from 30% body fat to 10% body fat without a struggle. I will take you through that entire process in this entire video showing you the scientific evidence behind what we're going to be doing and what you need to do step by step. These are the same steps that I've done not only myself over the last 10 years, repeating this process and improving it using the research data and all the knowledge I have as a medical doctor, but the same steps that I've used with all of my clients that I care deeply about because they've invested in me. But I wanna share that with you finally. So the first thing is gonna be contrary to what you've been told online. What you get online is it's a caloric deficit. You need to do this particular diet, it's keto. And it's all lies to an extent. Let me make a point. I highly recommend you watch the video till the end because if you cannot, it's a good indication that you're maybe not prepared to finally get lean. But with that being said, let's not waste any time. The number one thing I see with everybody who never gets lean or who never finally gets to a place where they can be lean the rest of their life is number one is here in the mind and it's the mindset. And before I get woo woo, think about everything and every little decision you've ever made that was good for you. You had to make a decision in your mind. So what I see with a lot of the people who've ever considered working with me or the people who asked me advice or the people I've spoken to over the last 10 years about Dr. Mike, what do I need to get into shape? It's their mindset. Number one, there's two things that play a massive role and they're very related. And once you do this exercise, you'll finally know what you need to do to finally get lean. And that two things are pain and priority. And I'm gonna use the analogy here of someone with a broken hand. Someone who has a broken hand, when it's broken, they have pain, the most, the highest level of pain, and they want to fix this pain immediately. And you need to ask yourself with your physique and finally get lean, how much pain are you in? Do you need to find a, a wife or a girlfriend right now and you need to first lose this weight? Do you need to save your marriage? Is it extremely important to lose this weight because there is a health risk and maybe time is running against you? That is what I call the highest amount of pain. And someone who doesn't have too much pain or no pain at all is someone who's maybe, they were playing a bit of tennis and their elbow hurts. They don't even consider going to the doctor, but someone with a high amount of pain has to see someone immediately. And with that comes priority. Depending on how much pain you have will determine how much priority it is. So for most of you, if you're watching this video, ask yourself, where does this fall between I have my hand broken and I'm just so fat, I, it, it's the number one goal I have in my life, it's my health and fitness. And you know what, it's okay, I need to focus on my family right now, I need to focus on my business, or I need to focus on something else, right, that's gonna consume time. Maybe you have a newborn. When you finally realize where you are in the spectrum, and if you're at a high amount of pain, that's the number one thing in your priority list. It's the number one thing is your health and fitness. Those people are the ones who get the best results. And those typically are my clients because they will listen to everything I say and they will also cut out all the excuses that people usually have, which is, I don't have time, this is too much, it's too difficult. Usually people who really want something are ready to do whatever it takes in the right manner. So ask yourself, write in a list, what's a priority in your life in general? Do this exercise and do it right now. If you cannot even do that exercise, click out goodbye, I'll see you in the next video. But if you can, write in your list, hey, what's the most important? Maybe it's your family and you need to ask, okay, what's more important right now? Maybe is it making money in your work or is it your health? If it's your health, if your health falls in the first or second priority in terms of work, your family, and everything else going on in your life, maybe you're a student, maybe you need to pass. So maybe your family's, maybe spending time with your family is number one, getting good grades in university is number two, maybe finding a girlfriend is number three, and getting in shape is number four. Don't waste your time. That's what happens with a lot of people and then they fail and they start eating terribly because they get so upset because they don't see the weight scale go down and they end up getting more weight. So figure out where this falls in your priority. Finally, after you've figured out, okay, Mike, it is in my top two, step one is done. You've come to the mindset that this is important to you and you need to make a difference. The second thing you need to interpret mindset-wise is how much time are you gonna give yourself? Those who decide to give themselves one month typically go for surgery, liposuction, gastric bypass, balloon, maybe a zempin. The people who decide that they want to give themselves two months to get into shape are the people who end up doing things that aren't sustainable. The keto diet, juice cleansing, water fast, herbal life challenges. And typically those people who give themselves two months and one month, those people typically fail and because they're in so much pain, they end up trying new things, which I totally get. That's life. You know, you try things, you fail, you try again. So there's no problem with that. But the people who decide to give themselves 
three months, four months, five months who give their body grace and understand it will take time to be able to get into the goal, the shape of my life because it took time for me to gain the weight. It didn't happen overnight. Those are the people that will see most success because they're patient and they will continuously practice the correct habits necessary so that they can finally get lead. And this is what I mean by mindset and psychology. Figure out your priority, all right? And then finally figure out how much time you're willing to dedicate. If it's in your top two of your priority list, you're in luck. If it's three, let's say it's maybe third, right? Maybe, let's say it's third. I'm not even gonna give you, going to give you an example. If it's third in your list, then all you need to do is just give yourself more time. This way you won't be frustrated and you won't give up too soon. So it is pain and priority. And the second thing is time. Now that we've established this, you're willing to give yourself three months to four months. You're willing to dedicate your life to being able to get into great shape because you know it's a life-changing experience. I call getting in shape being pre-rich. And I don't mean only rich in wealth. I mean rich in who you can be as a human being. Rich in the value you can give to your family because now you know how to get into shape. You can get everyone in your family in shape as well. And research has shown this. If someone in your family gets in shape, the chances that everyone else around you gets in shape is so much higher. Raise the standard for yourself financially and for your family. Now that that's out of the way, come with me. Now, Let's figure out how to really establish a caloric deficit. I'm going to use a client of mine. His name is Gary, and I'm going to use the exact metrics he gave me when he started with me. This won't be the exact way I build someone's caloric deficit in their diet, and I'm going to show you the logic so you can literally copy what I'm doing here and do it for yourself so you can get rid of your belly fat and finally get neat. Okay, so let's figure out what you need to do to finally be able to get lean. What you need to do, and I'm telling you, don't try and do something different compared to what I'm doing. Literally copy exactly what I do, and I'll explain why, right? So I want you to open your laptop, and I'm gonna put these links in the description of the video. Now, the resources we're gonna use, we're gonna use my website, scottbyscience.com. We're also going to use AI, and we're finally also gonna use another calculator. All of these are free. Now, to give you the details of the person I'm gonna use, and you can make the exact same, I'm gonna use a client of mine called Gary. Gary's male, he's 45 years old, he's 196.7 pounds, which is equivalent to 89.2 kilograms, he's 5'11", which is 180 centimeters, and he has decided he's going to train five times in the week. All we need to do, and that's the info you need, your gender, your age, weight, height, and how many times you're going to train. I'm going to input this details in here. So 45 is height, 180 centimeters, and he's male. And in kilograms, his weight is going to be 89.2, 89.2. And as you can see, this BMR calculator is calculating how many calories his body burns at rest, right? Because again, we need to get this number for if I just laid on a bed the entire day, how many calories will my body burn? And this will change based off of how tall you are, how much you weigh in your gender. So we're also going to factor in his activity. What type of movement is he doing, right? How much, okay, we now figured out how much his body's doing when he's doing nothing. Let's have a general estimation of how much he's doing when he's moving around and exercising. And the easiest way we do this is by determining how many workouts you're gonna do per week. Because Gary is training five times in the week, I consider this person to be active, right? So I'm gonna put him at that. Now the BMR calculator here, on my website has given him 2,785. So I'm gonna copy that, and I'm gonna put that here in a note. You guys have seen my screen here. I'm gonna put here SBS, and that is his maintenance. So then, let's go to chat. Let's go to the AI, and I'm literally gonna just copy the details, and I'm gonna paste it here. I'm gonna say, you are an expert health and fitness coach. Give me the total daily energy expenditure for the following information, right? And I'm just gonna paste that, that note, and literally just write the exact same thing but with your own details, right? And I'm gonna press enter. So the AI has given Gary 2,787. So we're just gonna put that here. 2,787. And as you can see, they are roughly the same. And again, all these numbers are in theory. They're all using the same equation to calculate this, right? 
And I'm not even gonna go into the detail because all you need to do is click on the links and save yourself the time. Now we know how many calories Gary needs to eat to maintain his weight, right? So his maintenance calories is on average, right? And what I like to do, and this is my logic, I like to round it off and I'm just gonna simplify it. So my calculator said 2,785, the calculator.net said 2,790, the AI said 2,782. All I'm gonna do to simplify it, and it's not gonna make a big difference, is I'll just round it off to 2,800. So to make it easier for you, just round it off. Now we know what his maintenance calories is. That is the amount of food and calories you can eat every day to maintain the weight that he currently has. But we don't want that, we wanna lose fat. Now this is five pounds of fat. This is five pounds of muscle. Just to give you guys a estimation, let's assume this is a pound of fat. To lose a pound of fat, research has shown, if I were to take a fire, just in basic terms, and burn it all, to lose a pound of fat, if I want it to disappear, it's 3,500 calories. And to lose a pound in a week, we need to be in a caloric deficit of 3,500 calories a week. And the simple way we can do that is saying 3,500 divided by seven days in the week, which will give us 500. So simply, we will do 2,800 minus 500. And that should put us in a caloric deficit to lose one pound of fat a week. And I only want you to have the objective of losing one pound of fat a week. Like I said, once you've agreed that you wanna give your body time, this is the easiest way to go about it. If you're a professional like myself, then you can do more and you know the effects of doing more. But now we understand, okay, I'm going to be in a caloric deficit of 500, right? So 2800 minus 500 is going to give us 2,300. So now we've done the biggest thing. We understand how many calories I need to eat every day so I can lose a pound of fat per week. But let's say a pound of weight. Now the next place is like, Mike, okay, I now know how many calories I need to eat to lose weight. What about the macros? The macros and why this is important, the protein, carbs, and fats, those three things all have its function. Protein to build muscle, carbs for energy, and fat for hormonal regulation. Now we want to get the perfect amount and you want to do this scientifically the way I would. So the very easy way, and I say this for 90% of you, is to give yourself one gram of protein per pound of body weight, considering you don't have any kidney issues or liver issues. If you're a healthy male or female, then please just follow one gram per pound of body weight. With that being said, now we can calculate our macro. So Gary's 196.7 pounds, right? So technically I should give Gary 196.7 grams of protein. But again, I wanna make this easy. So from my experience, and it's not gonna make a big difference. What makes a big difference is that you follow the plan. I'm going to give Gary 200 grams of protein. I am just rounding that off. What we're going to need to figure out the rest, we do wanna know how many calories there are. So just for general reference, guys, if you don't know, maybe you do, maybe you're a genius. One gram of protein is equal to four calories. One gram of carbs is equal to four calories. One gram of fat is equal to nine. So now I know that I'm gonna give myself 200 grams of protein and to figure out how much that is in calories is gonna be 200 multiplied by four. The total calories that's going towards my protein and my diet is going to be to 800 calories, right? So I'm just gonna write that down. So now we've figured out the protein. Now you say, okay, cool, what's the next thing we figure out? We need to figure out how many grams of fats we're going to eat. Now, the easy way to do this, and now when I work with someone, I try and determine like what foods they enjoy. Some people like more fattier foods, some people like less fattier foods and they prefer carbs. At the very low end, do not go lower than this, please. Just give yourself 20% of your total calories towards carbs, which is just some simple mathematics. We determined 2,300 is how many calories I'm gonna eat, and I wanna eat 20% of that, right? Which is 0.2. Multiply that by 0.2, and that's going to give you 460 calories, right? That's how much is going to go towards fats. And we're gonna just put that here. We also wanna know, okay, how many grams of fat is that, Mike? Well, we know that one gram of fat is equal to the nine calories. So to figure this out, we're gonna do 460 divided by nine. So divide it by nine, and that is going to give us 51.1 repeated, right? So 
what I'm gonna do to make it easy, I am just going to say 50 grams. Again, I'm just trying to make this easy. 50, 51, it's really not gonna make a difference. If you like measure that, it's, you, you can't even see it in olive oil, it's so little. But that's just how I make it easy. So I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna give myself 50 grams. So to figure out how many calories that is, I'm gonna say 50 multiplied by nine, multiplied by nine, right? To figure out how many total calories. So 450 is going to go towards fats. So 450. Okay, Mike, how do I determine how much carbs I'm eating? And this is where people get it wildly inaccurate. They're like, it's too much carbs, I'm, sh I'm afraid. You're just traumatized because you don't have good habits. Carbs are good for you, especially if you're eating it at the correct amount. Your brain utilizes carbohydrates. Imagine every time you're under eating carbohydrates severely, your brain isn't functioning optimally. Every time you're not giving yourself enough carbohydrates, you're not training strong enough, you, it makes you weak, it makes you not wanna move. And then you wonder, why am I not burning calories? You need to move too. A caloric deficit is all about burning more calories than what you're eating. You could start moving more and burn fat that way, right? Without getting onto a rant, right? We're gonna solve for X now. Now we're gonna figure out the carbs. So we basically give the rest of our calories towards carbs. So we take 2,300, everything we have, and then we're gonna minus that by 450, that's the fats. And then if you remember, I'm gonna minus that by 800, because that's the total calories that's going towards my protein, which means the rest of my calories that goes towards carbs is equivalent to 1,050. And then I'm gonna divide that by four, and that's going to give me 262.5. What I will do, I'm just gonna round it off to 263 to make it easy again. So 263, that's the total amount of carbs we're going to eat, 263, right? And I'm just gonna write 1050. And voila, you have your macros. I figured it out, literally copy me. One gram of protein per pound of body weight, 20% of your total calories towards your fats, and then finally the rest, figure out for X, so you can figure out your carbs. Now you guys, when you, when you figure this out finally, you're like, you know what, that's too much carbs, I'm gonna cut it down. No, don't do that. It's what the science said, just follow the science. I won't even go into a rant, but why I say, if you give yourself more time, you'll actually follow a plan and you won't try and do shortcuts here and there. Because the biggest thing I've seen with people, especially who wanna work with me, is that they either are eating way too much or way too little. Way too much is when they're gaining weight because they're cheating on the weekend, they're binging, etc. And way too little is that their metabolism adapts to all those little calories and then they find themselves in a rock and a hard place and then they're too fearful of eating a little bit more because it's like online it's being perpetuated that you need to be in a caloric deficit and that's all in your mind, I need to eat very little. Really just trust the science, just trust it. If you finally want to be able to get to your goal, you finally want to reach your dream body, your dream physique, you want to be like my clients, Shannon, Sandra, Amanda, Hallie, you finally want to work with someone who's going to guarantee results, then go into the description of my video and fill out the application. I work with busy professionals who are prepared to invest in themselves and want a guaranteed result and that knows that their health is priority and it knows that doing this transformation will not only help them and for you ladies that won't only help you but that's gonna help your entire family because you're gonna cook better for your husband you're gonna know exactly what to give to your kids if that is you you're a busy mom and you want to get results for you and your family fill out the application and I'll jump on a call with you so I can gather all this data and even more okay now We've figured out the complicated stuff. Now it's putting it into practice. This is what people struggle with and I'm gonna show you how easy it is. I'm gonna open my fitness pal. Now, I'm just gonna use my fitness pal. You can use any app you like. There's Lose It. There's an app by Jeff Nippard. It's called Macro Factor. I've never used it, but I've heard it's good. Give that a go. It's also paid, but nonetheless, but I'm gonna use my fitness pal because it's what I've utilized my entire life. So first you're gonna go to more and you're gonna go to goals and you're gonna go to calories. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to set the macros that I calculated earlier. So we determined that protein was gonna be at 200 and I'm gonna put that here. And we said fats is gonna be 50. And I said that my carbs are gonna be 263. And that gives us exactly 2,302 calories. And I'm gonna check. And that is fine, guys. Like 2,302 
don't get so obsessed with the little little detail just cover the basics first and I'm gonna now show you how to build a meal plan I'm gonna show you how to build a meal plan and what you should do and I'm gonna take things out of my fridge I have some of the stuff here that I took out to just show you guys but we generally like the the ideas I have is that at max I want about 50 grams of protein per meal so if I have 200 grams of protein I maybe want four meals at least if I'm maybe 150 pounds and I'm eating 150 at least three meals right so each meal can have 50 grams of protein but I'm gonna do this very simple we are first gonna have oats and you know what I decided I'm gonna have protein oats so I'm gonna take out the ingredients that's gonna be necessary for my protein oats and I'm gonna make protein oats this way so I'm gonna add this protein powder to the oats I'm gonna have my oats here I'm also gonna add milk the next thing you're gonna utilize is a weight scale because it's very very important to make sure that you're tracking everything accurately and what I recommend for all you lazy people I'm lazy too. just track one day so I'll track all of this and then I'll eat the same food every day. And then when you get bored, you can change it. And the cool thing is, let's say you don't want oats for breakfast, but you want to eat the rest of the meals. You can just delete all the stuff from oats and you can put something else that will fit. So now let's figure this out. So I'm going to go here to add food. And that's a cool feature on here. You have to pay for the app. Like invest in your health, guys. I'm not, I'm, I, and before anyone comments about it, it's not free anymore. Just invest in your health. Scan barcode. And this is a cool feature that I really love about my fitness pal. You can scan the barcode. And here it says that 100 grams of oats is 370 calories, 55 carb, 8 fats, 14 protein. I'm just going to eat 100 grams. I'll leave it at that. And now I want to also add one scoop of protein. So I'm just going to go here. I'm going to take my phone. And literally I'm going to show you guys how I build a plan. Now again, I have a data database of over a thousand recipes. I've been doing this for a decade. So I'm showing you the simplest way. I'm going to scan, scan the protein. And the, the oats said it's going to give me 14 grams. One scoop is 27. You know what? I think I want a little bit more protein. So I'm going to go for two scoops living dangerously and as you can see so far it's showing me that there's 68 grams of protein in my meal already so that's awesome and then finally what I'm gonna do is I will have milk right I'm gonna make my oats with some milk and the one this one is low fat so when you go to your store or in your household if you use oat milk no problem if you use almond milk no problem the more calorie friendly the better right so here it's 250 mils uh, let's say I'm just gonna change this unit to one per one milliliter. Let's say I want about 350 mils, right? And voila, meal one done. And that's my protein oats, right? So that's breakfast done. Now it tells me that I have 119 carbs left, 36 fat, 123 protein. If you guys remember from a video I made, and this is why my recipe videos are so good, I made some protein tacos, which I really liked. So. What I'm going to do is I'll show you like, okay, I'm going to make protein tacos. So I'm going to do this low carb wrap and in tacos, you need lean ground beef. So I'm going to take lean ground beef. And then you know what? In those tacos, I had tomatoes. I had, you know, some iceberg lettuce. I had some pickles that I added in my tacos. What else did I have, Mike? Ah, cheese, yeah. You know what, I had this uh, Philadelphia cheese, right? As you guys can tell, because I obviously live in a healthy home, I already have like these cool little snacks and stuff. Go to your local grocery store and search for lower calorie, light, low fat, high protein options, right? So these are the general ingredients. So I'm gonna figure out, okay, I wanna make tacos. I'm gonna make three tacos. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to diary and go for lunch, add food, scan barcode, right I'm gonna have three and it says here that one is 45 grams right so I'm gonna have three so I'm just gonna put three in here and that's tracked for the lean ground beef right and I'm gonna show you guys an example this is where experience comes in with your lean ground beef I usually go 97 percent lean three percent fat you see like here where I live they don't show you how lean I just look at how red it is and you can see there's not much fat streaks which is usually the lower fat version and this is from experience but i will have about 300 grams of this but let's say for my three wraps because i want a bit let's say i'm going to put 300 grams right so i'm going to put um lean ground 
beef and you see here because there's no barcode to scan what's cool about my fitness pal is you can search a food lean ground beef and you can search and it's going to give you a variety of options and you can see that the first one is verified it's 180 calories second one is verified it's 196 calories at four ounces um, they, they all range one here is 170 calories that's 92 percent lean um, I'm gonna put lean ground beef and then I'm gonna write 97 right I'll just search for what they have there and here they have 97% lean ground beef and you can see the first two options 130 130 170 I'm just gonna pick the top option and the point is as long as you're consistent with the option you choose no problem because next week when you've seen the result you can decide to just reduce the quantity and you've still created a, de a delta, a deficit. I'm going to just change this to grams because I'm used to that and I'm going to put 300 and 300 grams gives me exactly 63.5 grams of protein, 10.6 grams of fat and it comes out to a total of 344 calories. Obviously there's no carbohydrates and protein so in a, in a beef so I'm just going to check that. This meal comes out so far with everything I've added, it comes out to 686 calories. So there's 32 carb, 20 fats, 86 grams of protein. I'm happy with that. When it comes to veg veggies, they're so low calorie, no point in tracking it. So veggies, I generally don't track, especially non-starchy veggies. So no need to do that. And then I'm gonna have three of these. So I'm gonna go to add food, scan barcode, and then record that. Um, let's see here. One one of these is 16.6 um, grams, so 16.6, 16.6 multiplied by 3 gives me 49.8, so I'm going to put 49.8, right? And then finally guys, when I make my wrap, I like adding some sauce in there. I'm just going to put this one now. You can use any sauce, but track your sources. I'll use one serving of this, right? So I'm going to go add food, scan barcode. So don't forget to track your sources and your oils. It's a common mistake I see people make. So I'll maybe add two servings of this, right? To be clear. So I'll add two servings of that. So that's going to give me 30 grams. So what I do is I'll put it just to show you guys how to track the sources. I'll put it on the scale. I'll turn it on and then I'll take it. I'll spread it on my meal, I'll put it back and I'll see, it'll show me that it's minus, you know, 10 until I get to 30. So that's how you do that. And you just tear when you're ready. So now I've made my wrap. So I've tracked my wrap. Fantastic. Now in any good plan, I have a, always have a serving of vegetables in a day, like any serving, if it's broccoli, whatever you decide, but have a serving of veggies and also have a serving of fruit. So my fruit for today, I'm going to have an apple. So. I'm gonna track here, right? I'm just gonna take this off. And this apple is 220 grams. So I'm gonna go in my snacks and I'm gonna say, okay, red apple. And I'm gonna search. You see here it shows one medium. Um, I'm just gonna see if it lets me choose per gram. I'm gonna go to grams and this one is exactly 219, right? So I'm gonna track two, one, nine. And this apple is 129 calories, 30.8 carbs, 0.4 fats, 0.6 protein. So let's say, see where we are, right? Because this is like a puzzle. So now I have my breakfast, I have my lunch, I have my snack. Now it shows me from my remaining calories, I have 49 grams of carbs, 6 grams of fat, and 28 grams of protein. So now I'm like, damn, what can I have for dinner? Basically, I need a, a meal that has carbs in it and I need a meal that has a lot of protein but very little fats. Let's see bread. Let's see like how much bread I can have here because bread is going to be my main carb source for dinner. Let's say I want to have a sandwich. I can go to dinner. So I'm going to go to scan barcode for my bread. I'm going to click here. Now you see it says here that two slices is 32. Remember that I had 45. So let me see what happens if I choose like three slices, right? Let's say I want three slices. It takes me to 48.3. That's a little higher. I'm going to, I'm just going to say, fine, let's do that. Now it takes me, it says that I have 20 grams of protein left. I have no more fats. So now you need to ask yourself what has a lot of protein, no fats and no carbs, right? That can be tuna. So I could maybe make a toast with tuna. That can be egg whites. 
Or if I want, I could just have the toast, literally just toast it and maybe put butter spray on it that's zero calorie. And then I can have a shake or like one scoop is usually 20 grams with water. But you know what? To go with my toast, I'm just gonna have egg whites on there scrambled. So I'm gonna click here on the dinner and I'm gonna click add food and I'm gonna add egg whites. I'm gonna search egg whites, right? And I'm gonna search that. And I will take it from this eggs here, right? So in one large egg, this is a large egg, it's 17 calories. So it shows here, one large egg gives me 3.6 grams of protein. So let me see how many I need to hit 20. So if I hit five, that gives me 18. Okay, let me see what happens if I take six eggs. That gives me 21.6, I'm gonna take six egg whites. And voila, guys, there it is, I planned my day. So this is, as it's like a puzzle, right? So I went over by my carbs by one. My fats, I have two grams of fat left. And then I went over by my protein by two grams and I'm over by 58 calories. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna take that to the bank. And voila, now you've had your full meal plan planned and that's how easy it is. And you can also use egg white cartons, just the same concept, copy me, go into your fridge and just track this. And what happens after a week, two weeks, three weeks, you, you learn so much about the foods you're putting in your body because you're tracking it and you're seeing, okay, this is how much the Chobani yogurt has. You see, I took this out, but I didn't use it, right? So do this every day and eventually you're gonna figure out which recipes work for you. So the metric people usually use is a weight scale. And I'm gonna talk about this bad boy right here, but an app I highly recommend you guys download is this app here called Happy Scale. So an app I recommend you download is called Happy Scale. This is what it looks like, and you click that. Now to know, okay, Mike, how do I know that this is working? I want you to go every day, when you wake up, then you get on the scale, and you look, huh, what's my weight? That's my weight, 186.6. So I'm gonna go here, and then I'm gonna go in pounds, and I'm gonna add, my weight today was 186.6. And I wanna say for all you guys there, don't get so emotionally attached to the number. It's just, your weight is literally your mass times gravity. It's just data. It's just for you to see where you are. It doesn't mean anything. Because I could, let's say I drank this whole bottle, right? Remember my weight was 186.6? Let's say before you went to bed, you were really thirsty and you chugged this whole bottle. Your, your weight could be in the morning, 188.8, right? Yeah, I'm two pounds higher. No, you're not fat, it's just you drank more water. So the point I wanna make is, the weight scale, so many things can fluctuate with your weight. So I'm just gonna show you guys hypotheticals, right? So I'm gonna add entry here, I'm gonna go to pounds, and I'm just, to make this easy, I'm just gonna go to April 1st, right? April Fool's Okay, I'm just gonna go to April 1st. And my weight was 186.6, right? And then the next day, I'm, I'm really happy, I say 186, I'm 186 flat. And then the day after I go to 185.6. I'm like, amazing, man, this thing is working. Weekend comes, it's a Friday, and you decide to have a cheat meal. And you say, you see the next day, the next morning, you didn't sleep enough, you, you know, you had a bad meal, and you see, wow, my weight's back up to 188. Terrible, ah, sad. But then you fast forward the next day and you get back to the diet, you pick yourself back up and you see, okay, I'm back at 185. Then you see, okay, I'm back at 184. And then you see that you're back at 183, a whole new low weigh-in. And if you look at this graph that I'm showing you, you can see that the graph is trending downwards, right? You're seeing, although you had this cheat meal, it didn't affect your weight. And that's the one way to look at it. The second thing I recommend to do every two weeks, do tape measurements, right? Do shoulders, do chest, do midsection, belly button, do thighs, do glutes. And you can use that as a second way to track to see if it's getting better. And then finally take pictures. You wanna take pictures in one location, once a week, right? Let's say every Sunday, front, side, back, and take them every Sunday. And you can use your weight scale, your tape measurement and the photos to be able to truly see, okay, it's working or no, it's not working. And then this way you're making a scientific and smart decision based off of three different variables and just depending on this. Now, let's talk about cardio, what to do with cardio, follow me. We have the diet part figured out. Now the next part is your cardio. 
forget the hit, forget all the different technical, cool, like cardio machines. Keep it simple. I just want you to walk every day. I want you to hit 8,000 daily steps and every week increase it by 500. Week one, when you start, once you've done the diet, walk 8,000 steps. If you walk more, no problem, but I just want you to walk. I don't want you to run. I don't want you to do anything crazy. I just want you to walk and increase that by 500 each and every single week. We know that 10,000 steps will roughly help you burn 500 calories. This varies depending on your height and your weight and your gender, but walking taps mainly into fat stores and it will burn more fat. You can go outside and walk at the park. You can walk every, you can walk to the gym. You can do different forms. Um, something I recommend to all my clients is get an under the desk or a walking pad. So I will watch Netflix on my TV here when I'm spending time with my family or after a meal, I want to digest it a bit better. I'll walk on a walking pad. That's the only cardio you want to focus on. Keep it simple. It will help you lose fat. Walking is the best cardio by far because you can do it every day. You don't need to go to the gym. And research has shown that it will tap many needs to fast stores and also it's not as intensive on your body. So that's all you need to do with cardio. Don't overcomplicate it, right? And when you do get to 20% to 15% and you're trying to break that 50% barrier, right? Let's say you're at 20% and under, then start doing the incline walking then start doing the high intensity interval training if you want to get another edge and maybe do it once or twice a week don't do it every day because the problem i see with people and why i'm recommending the walking because remember we said we're giving ourselves enough time doing this will help you lose 20 to 24 pounds on its own this is my client's insurance policy now we have cardio sorted let's talk about training right is the next physical part at a minimum you want to train three times in a week at a max I want you to train six times a week. So just say realistically, how much can you do in a week? And based off of that, let's say you say I can do three, then the best training split for you is a full body training program. Full body on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right? Now that's just an example. Let's say you say, hey Mike, I can only train four times in a week. The best split for that is an upper body, lower body, upper body, lower body, the best. Let's say you train five times in a week. You can go upper body, lower body, push, pull legs. Push means all your push muscles, chest, shoulders, triceps. Pull means all the pulling exercises, back, biceps. And then legs, obviously quads, hams, glutes. And that's five times in the week. You can also do full body five times in the week. That's another option. There's many different options, but those are the two. And then finally, if you want to train six times in a week, you can go push, pull legs, and repeat push pull legs right and you want to train with a good form watch me do my form here you want to train with intensity you want to choose the heaviest weight you can and you want to do that consistently each and every single week this will help you build your muscle and it's that simple don't complicate it good form and then make sure you're hitting the gym and then finally guys the way i like describing sleep your body is a ferrari it is the most well-designed organism on this earth. And sleep is the equivalent to the oil in your Ferrari. If you don't get enough sleep, if you don't put enough oil in that engine of your Ferrari, it's not gonna make it down the road. It's gonna break down. So when you're sleeping more, you're allowing yourself to have optimal levels of testosterone. You're going to have good hormonal balance. You're going to have good recovery from the damage you've done to your muscle. Your muscle repairs itself when you're sleeping. You're allowed to think faster, think better. It fixes everything. I've had clients who I just focus on their sleep in the beginning. They are maybe sleeping six hours and I got them to seven to eight and the weight started flying off because there's so many implications that sleep has. So if you're sleeping little and you're trying everything, that's probably the reason why you're not losing weight. It will drop your cortisol levels. It will do so much. I could make a whole 30, 40 minute video just on sleep. So at bare minimum, sleep seven hours. If you can sleep more, then sleep more. General things, set a time to go to bed. Stop eating food four hours before bed. Stop drinking liquids two hours before bed. Reduce your blue light exposure, so stop looking at screens or get a blue light blocker one hour before bed. And then no caffeine after midday, right? Because you don't want to be drinking caffeine at 4 p.m. and you're wondering why your, your, heart, your heart's going bump, bump, bump when, you, when you're in bed and it's just going like crazy. No caffeine 
after midday and you'll be able to sleep. I'll leave the video here. I hope it was helpful. And if it was, let me know in the comment section down below. And yeah, leave it a gentle thumbs up and share this with a friend. They need it. Peace.